Welcome back here. Time now is 613 and now this morning sewage in the South Bay is affecting people in many ways from their wallets to their health. For those whose job takes them into the ocean, it is taking a severe toll. In this Earth 8 report, we show you what it's like to be a lifeguard during Imperial Beach's contamination crisis. It is a sad sight across the beaches in Imperial Beach. Barely anyone enjoying the water and the few who are, are taking a big risk. That's because these waters are full of bacteria. The type of bacteria you would find in human and animal waste. Anything that gets flushed or sent down the drains, channels and streets of Mexico flows here. Take a look at this video from Imperial Beach lifeguards. These foam balls you see are filled with fecal matter. This is probably the worst it's been, and I grew up here, so, you know, urbanization in, in Mexico, the more urbanization, the more runoff um, infrastructure gets taxed. That video was taken March of this year, and Captain Jason Lindquist wishes he could say it was a rare occurrence. It's pretty bad. You, you get uh, lifeguards with headaches. You can smell it. The whole city can smell it. Most lifeguards start out getting headaches. On, you know, on, on days like that, but if they go in, yeah, we've had, we have a couple people that have had rashes and different things. There's obviously no gate blocking off the beach, but there are signs that say the water is contaminated with sewage. Not everybody sees that, so warning families, letting them know about the bacteria becomes a big part of their job daily. Not all swimmers are aware or care about the extent of the pollution, and it's even in the air. Recent studies show what people are breathing along Ibis coast can hurt them. 56,000 to be clean, it's 1,400. Oh, wow. So Where you'd normally see nothing. the surf report, Captain Linquist shows me they also have a sign at the lifeguard station so with updated here, bacteria yeah, counts. But see, it was clean here, dirty, dirty, but these are really close. More dirty days than not. The south side of IB has been dangerously contaminated for nearly 700 days, almost two years straight. You're constantly going in and out of this and nobody knows what this is. I tend to take care of myself pretty well. I think I'm fine, but we don't know about long-term effects. That's one thing that's becoming an issue with the staff and the morale is Keeping lifeguards is a huge problem in IB now. This summer, they only had 60% of their shifts filled. This has taken its own toll on the staff, for sure. The mental health, if they've been sick, they don't want to get sick. They'll still do rescues, but they're subjecting their eyes, nose, mouth, and any open wounds to contamination. We still go in. We still make rescues, whether it's uh, tourists, surfers, locals, or even the smuggling. Once they go in, when they get out, they got to do an exposure report, and then if they get sick, it, it becomes a workers' comp issue. They can't even train in the ocean they're tasked to guard. Normal day, clean water, lifeguards are doing training in the water where they work. Currently, we we send our lifeguards to another city to uh, train and work out. We pay for swim time at a pool. And the future here not so promising because they had to cancel the junior lifeguard program this year. Without that training program, it gets even tougher to recruit skilled lifeguards. It's forcing these brave men and women to take on challenges along the U.S.-Mexico border that no other lifeguards face. And then to add to some of the staffing issues they've had, Captain Linquist says IB lifeguards make about $18 an hour, and many people say that's less than most fast food workers. And according to Indeed.com, lifeguards with the city of San Diego make about $21 an hour. So it's hard to lure in people when they're faced with so many different challenges, especially the health, the long-term yeah, impacts, absolutely. the unknown of what they're swimming in. Look, the fact that they have to go somewhere else to train right. says a lot about the water and the issues that they're of having course. there. Yeah, they're and not going to send people in there if they don't have to be in there for an emergency. Seeing that fecal foam, mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, that is well, and it's something's got to get done here. It's just tough because you watch it and it's a travesty to see, but then you also think about what's been proposed for solutions and right. it's like these are some five, ten year plans right. down the line. Like, are we going to get a We're resolution like in our lifetimes? Soon. We yeah. don't. We would know. hope so. And right. it is getting a lot worse. And I think that's the part with the population in Tijuana growing so much. People are literally living on this infrastructure that has not been fixed since the 50s. Mm, right. So you think about that and 
I mean, it's just become the past two years, especially yeah. a bigger issue. And we've so talked about funding's been earmarked for it, but right, right, not right. actually getting done yet. Mm -hmm. And then you okay. look at the price that uh, those lifeguards are getting paid, mm -hmm. the, you know, yeah. per hour. Right. 18 it? versus 21 mm -hmm. can add up. Yeah. So. It's a big issue. Thank you for highlighting mm -hmm. it.